Hi, we're at the core and this, this session is my, my final session in the overall structure of the core. And I want to take this time to really just talk about what now, what's next. I find that the fulfillment of such a course that we've been on has, a, has an impact on people's lives. I know this, that the Bible says, as Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, said, that the end of a thing is better than its beginning. What that means is the sense of completion. And I'm here to tell you, you, you have come into this course, and those of you who have truly focused, and you've given it your all, and I know who you are, usually it only comes out to be about 15 or so, in a given year and that's pretty much this year when I did this recording 14 of you have actually fulfilled every part now some of you will catch up later as time permits but part of this course was also that you made it happen within the time restraints because that's what ministry is and I just want to say to those that have made this commitment I appreciate that commitment God appreciates that commitment that you have given your life to this. Now, of course, I've, I've given my life to this because this is my life. I hope that in some way I have served as an example of what our obligation is as ministers. See, our ministry is who we are. Our ministry is what we say. And our ministry is what we do. Those three things, I'm leaving this with you in this short last session, that you have to figure out. It is your, you have to work out your own salvation, your own ministry with fear and trembling. You have to figure out that your ministry is who you are. So who are you? Who are you? Your ministry is what you say. God doesn't do anything that he doesn't first speak through his prophet. Remember, everything that we have learned about ministry, everything about spirit becoming a reality in our life is voice activated. What are you saying? You might be something. You might feel something, but it has to be spoken. What are you saying about your future now? What are you feeling? Are you speaking it? Remember what we saw about the development of vision. And finally, your ministry is what you do. You will not have a ministry, and you will not become something if you do not make the practical decisions, take the practical steps to its fulfillment. Again, I repeat, our ministry is who we are, starting in our heart. It is what we say. A man is justified by the things that comes from his mouth. And it's what we do. What are you doing? If you want my advice as a teacher, and I'm going to give you this advice as part of the core in this final moment with you. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to everybody. Take the truth that you know about Jesus and bring it to people. Everything I've taught you in this course has been to substantiate that. The euagelion is the only thing that we need to focus on. The passion of Christ, the good news. The good news that we are no longer in bondage. That we are free from the restrictions and the laws of man's doctrines and ways. In the freedom of Christ, to enjoy the power of the Holy Spirit. I admonish you. I encourage you. Seek God. Seek His kingdom. Seek His righteousness until you find it. Seek it first above all things. Who you are. What you say. What you do. Your ministry. I'm here to support you for the rest of your life. I'm here to support you as long as you're doing the things that God is calling you to do. I want to encourage you. Don't let anyone tell you that you cannot. No, no man dictate to you who you are. 
Let no man restrict what you say. Let no man stop you from doing what you do, and your ministry will become great. God is the one leading you. We've balanced this out in this course with spiritual authority, but ultimately you're going to have to listen to God. You're going to have to obey Him. And I will give you this promise as the director of this course. If you find yourself in the midst of restrictions, if you find yourself in groups of people, in a hierarchy of people around you that are telling you what to be, telling you what to say, and telling you what to do, without regard or consideration for your ministry, then you are in a trap and you're in a prison. Every ministry that's operating in Christ has its objective to develop you, to teach you, to admonish you that only through much tribulation can we enter the kingdom of God and that your course that's laid out from you, Paul talked about this, there's a race and it is a course. There are parameters to that race. There are lines marking our path, which is the purpose of God. It's your ministry. Your vision is yours. Nobody's going to get it. Nobody's going to understand it at first. In fact, the enemy has as agenda number one to stop you from fulfilling the ministry that you are, that you speak, and that you do. So if you find yourself in that bondage, I'm telling you that I'm not going to hold you back. I'm here for you as an advocate. You may be surrounded with adversaries, but I will be your advocate, as is the Holy Spirit and is Jesus. If any man tells you that he has some control over you and that you can't make it without them and that you need this, no. I'm telling you, you have an unction from the Holy One. You are anointed. You don't need that any man teach you. That same unction will guide you, will lead you, and show you, but you must obey it. Subject yourself to the Spirit of God. Obey what the Lord is telling you. I encourage you to follow after the thing that God, your career, your race, your path, is what God is giving to you. And in everything that I've taught you in the core, one thing you know has been consistent from beginning to end to this final moment, and that is be free. Be free. It was for freedom that He set you free. Now, you can be a, a servant to everybody, but a slave to no one. You can be a servant to every human on earth, serve everybody, do good to all people, especially to those of the household of faith. But there comes a time you have to understand that you are a slave to only one, and that is God. And He's the master. You do not stand or fall according to the other servants, but according to the master, the scripture says. And your relationship with Him, ultimately, when it's all said and done, is all that's really going to matter about your ministry. And God is pulling out of you what you are, what you say, and what you do. Your ministry. God is telling you, what's next? You might ask, well, what's next now? The core is over. What am I going to do? Well, continue. I'm, I'm, I'm counseling you to continue in what you've learned. What did you learn? You learned outlining. You learn stratifying, qualifying, and quantifying God's holy word, taking revelations and putting them in writing, writing down and making them plain like Habakkuk says. Don't stop that. You learned Bible reading. You learned consistent Bible reading according to a specific plan. Now, we're finishing the hours early, but you know that Bible reading plan doesn't end. It keeps going until the dates that you've been given, so you still have a couple of weeks. Don't stop it. Don't stop it. Some of you have already said, I would like to keep making outlines. I invite you to do so. If you make outlines and you send them to me, I will read them, I will continue to critique them, and I will continue to support you in that endeavor. And by the way, the more outlines you have, the more ready you are to be used. You've studied to show yourself approved. and God will open doors. Let's just say, God willing, and hopefully God will. Let's just say suddenly you find yourself as the head of a revival, an outbreak of the Spirit. Just randomly you're talking to someone on your couch and the glory of God comes upon you. That person is delivered and set free. Maybe they have an illness, sickness, disease, or cancer, arthritis. They're healed. Their testimony expands. People gather together 
I have seen this happen. And before long, you have seven, eight, 20 people around you that you did not plan. And suddenly a church explodes around you. Are you ready? If you have these archives, these messages, think about how prepared you already are to teach those people. Think about this gift that I'm giving you. I have given to you, the students of the core, I have given you the core. I've given you this book. I've given you this. This I have freely received. I freely give to you. Take this material. It is my, I bequeath it to you. If I die right now today, I will have left this information. I will have left my life. You understand, this reason is why Jesus, come back. Take your bride away. I have no fear of the return of Christ. I'm ready for it. Why? Because everything he's spoken to me, I have spoken to you. Everything he's given me, I have offered to you. It's just emulating the ministry of Jesus. Have you created your core values? Have you amassed your spiritually intellectual material, written it down and make it plain. That's why you can never stop outlining. You know what the core is? The core is all my outlines put together in groupings as directed by the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, that is ministry. That's what you are, then said, then done. Ministry is who you are. It's what you say. It's what you do. I'm here for you. Also remember this promise that I gave you. I'll give it to you again. If you find yourself in a position, already if you're in the midst of the people of bondage and these problems, look, I offer, I offer our ministry to you as your house. I offer our ministry as your base. You may say, you know what? I'm no longer wanting to be a part of this group or that group or these people because of these restrictions and issues. I'm not talking about you being disgruntled, but I'm talking about real bondage and restrictions. My ministry is here for you. I will counsel you and help you. My first counsel would be, if you come to me and say, brother, I just want to be under your ministry, the first thing I'm going to ask, what's wrong? What happened? What did they say? What did they do? I'm going to hear your case. But if you come and say, I just want to do what God called me to do, and they won't let me, you tell me why. I'll tell them. Maybe they'll be right about some things. I don't know. The first side when heard always seems right. So I need to hear both sides. And in doing so, as I have done to many, I will welcome you and I will be there for you and I will do my best to guide you and help you and counsel you and be a covering for you. And I'm not talking about usurpation. I'm not talking about wanting this apostolic covering over you. You know my definition of this. I'm not looking for any kind of control. I'm looking to encourage you and help you find your future. If you want to say that, fine. I have people around the world that when they're challenged, and they, the people are questioning them. What, you, who, what authority do you, they, they'll say to them outright, I'm, I am a graduate of the core under Pastor Stephen Nico, the Apostle Stephen Nico, and under his authority and his backing, I am doing this. And when they say that, the people back off. They're like, oh, okay, all right, praise God. And they go research, they look into it, they see, see, that's the authority of someone like me, what we have. All oh, honesty, I can give you a certificate. If you want a certificate for doing the core, Tell me, if it can help that you have some type of certificate signed and all the pretty little frillies on it, and that is going to give you some advantage in life so that you can hang it on a wall and you're all into that and you know I could care less, I will provide that for you. Seriously, you tell me and I will produce this certificate. Me and my people here, we will make it and we will put it in an envelope and we will mail it to you or get it to you and you will be able to frame it and put it on a wall and it will be beautiful as a graduation diploma from the core. I'll give that to you. I can offer that to you. And honestly, some of our students have needed it in certain positions. If you, 14 of you are eligible to receive that right now. You understand? The 14 that did it within the time parameter and fulfilled it, uh, that is what I offer to you. My endorsement and my backing and my time with you. So I'm here for you. And if you in life get out there and you get into some kind of trouble and your back's against the wall and, and you're desperate and you don't know what else to do, I'm telling you that I'm here for you. Let's say that you commit some atrocious sin. You have some grievous 
error, egregious thing that that is is this terrible act you've done, and you realize it, and you come to your senses, and you need help, and you're afraid because you know if you say these things, if you really confess these sins to somebody out there in the religious world, they're gonna hang you, they're gonna they're gonna lynch you, they're gonna throw you out of the fort, breaking your sword, as my friend Mike Gaskin says, they're gonna reject you. And if that moment comes in your life where you have that, it, it, it's you're in despair. I'm telling you, I'm your advocate. I'm your Shem and Japheth. I will never be your ham. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. And I will do everything within my power to protect you. I will do everything with my, in my power for my love for you to cover the multitude of your sins. I'm not talking about false accusations. I'm not talking about you suffering persecution for goodness. I'm talking about you messing things up and being stupid and making some mistakes that put you in a horrible place. If you come to me, I'm going to help you out of that hole and that dilemma. I don't care what it is. I don't care what you've done. Come to me first. Talk to me. Seek my counsel. I'll be there for you to help you. Whether it's only by emails and correspondence or whatever messaging system we can use, or it's actual physical interaction with you. Those of you who are in other nations and you're thinking about being a missionary, I'm telling you, there are opportunities in Southeast Asia for you to serve. There are things you can do. I'm here for you. According to everything I taught you, you're going to have to find your funding. You're going to have to get people to support you. You're going to have to develop that vision. But if you do that and you need help on this end, bringing you to locations where you can be put to work and serve. According to the principles that I've taught you in the core, I'm also here for you as a channel. Those in the United States of America, I'm the president of Move with Compassion. We are a 501c3 missionary agency and a channel through which your funds even can move. And we will set up for you. We have an office where you can connect and you will have everything that you need through that ministry. I will help and support you as Americans there, but if you're here in Southeast Asia, if you're connected, I'm here at Antioch Center for the Nations for this moment in time. That's exactly where I am. And the Antioch Center for the Nations is a church that will, that will be there for you. And you can speak that name and say you're a part of that church. We're here. And we have Antiochs in other nations now that are growing in different places. We have bases in, in Cambodia and Indonesia. We have bases expanding into areas of Malaysia and in Germany and India. And we have reaches of those places that we can connect you to also. And so you come to me and you say, I just feel like God's calling me to this nation, this place. I have footholds in Africa, connections there with people there. All these things we have as our resources. It's not a lot. Money I don't have. I will say to you exactly what was told the man at the gate. Beautiful. Silver and gold I might not have, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk into your ministry. Who you are, what you say, what you do, I'm here to support you. I love you, and I know that we have connected and we formed the bond. And I don't intend on that bond ending, but I intend on it going forever. I love you all so much. I, I'm not going to pray at this moment. This is prayer. I'm talking to you in prayer. God hears our words. If you agree with me, let's come into an agreement. That's what I want. Just one final agreement with you as we move to the future, that you and I are brothers and sisters in the Lord that together we will go forward in the kingdom and we will support one another. We will help one another. And when we sin, we will turn to each other. We will confess our faults to one another. We will pray for one another. And the effectual and fervent prayer of us, the righteous, will avail much for one another. We will be a body and we will work together. I truly love you in the name of Jesus. And I am here for you and I look forward to our future together. Feel free, please, to communicate with me. Please write me. Please, uh, most of the core people that have come and gone, they give me regular reports. I invite, I would love at least, at least a weekly note from you, what's going on in your life. Of course, I have um, well over 100 people that do this pretty consistently, so it might take me a little time to get back to you, but believe me, I'm looking at it, I'm reading, and I'm praying. And this is also very important. Pray for me. 
pray for me. I'm in a position to be a high target and a lot of opposition comes and a lot of persecution and there are often lies and things come against, but I know and I'm not worried because my source is Christ, but my fellowship is with you. The core, the students of the core make up a vast body of people and, and the alumni, I want to have congresses in the future where we can all come together. I would love to do some events where all the students that have ever been to the core can come together and we can just celebrate together in the presence of God. I also want to thank, maybe they're watching, the pe those who have participated this year in the core, you know, the ones Mike Ask and Jerry Edmond and um, the different speakers that have given these messages of encouragement. I want to thank them for their participation in this course that did it in the timely fashion that they did for us as admonitions, which by the way, there are a few stragglers that are going to come along and have some some endorsements and some other things they want to say to you. As they come, I'm going to post them on the core. Although we're finishing right now officially, they will give their their meet, uh, messages that they want, and I'll share them. Which, by the way, pay attention to the core because I will continue to post things. Another thing I'm offering to you is continued education that will go on. I'm going to regularly do teachings according to different subjects. And as I said, you as the students write with questions about what subject you're interested in and I'll do my best to help you and teach you those subjects. And I'm going to post those things. Remember to tune into our ministry page at Antioch where there will be regular presentation, regular recordings of our teachings, regular recordings of my preaching and my sharing, and those things will be made public to you through the core. I'm looking forward to our interaction in the future. I'm looking forward to this connection and I'm here for you. I'm just getting started. I'm only 53 years old. I'm going to live to 120 years of age. So believe me, I'll probably outlive a lot of you guys. I still, I still have another 60, 60 plus years to go here. So 67 more years, 66 more years in that lifetime. Uh, you might die before I do, even though you're much younger than me. But in that lifetime, I'm here for you. I thank you for it. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. We're one in spirit. Lord, sanctify the students and help them. I pray this for you always. I love you. God bless you. Onward and upward for Jesus. Remember, your ministry is who you are, what you say, and what you do for him.